until little but neutrons remains there. Then, rebounding from this collapse, they explode outward. And by explode, I mean explode. For one glorious month, a supernova stretches millions of miles and shines brighter than a billion stars. And during the supernova, so many gazillions of particles with so much momentum collide so many times per second that they high jump over the normal energy barriers and fuse onto iron. Many iron nuclei end up coated in neutrons, some of which decay back into protons and thereby create new elements. Every natural combination of element and isotope spews forth from this particle blizzard. Hundreds of millions of supernovae have gone through this reincarnation and cataclysmic death cycle in our galaxy alone. One such explosion precipitated our solar system. About 1.6 billion years ago, a supernova sent a sonic boom through a black cloud of space dust about 15 billion miles wide, the remains of at least two previous stars. The dust particles commingled with the spume from the supernova, and the whole mass began to swirl and eddies like the bombarded surface of an immense pond. The dense center of the cloud boiled up into the sun, making it a cannibalized remnant of the earlier stars, and planetary bodies began to aggregate and clump together. The most impressive planets, the gas giants, formed when a stellar wind, a stream of ejecta from the sun, blew lighter elements outward toward the fringe. Among those giants, the gaseous is Jupiter, which for various reasons is a fantasy camp for elements where they can live in forms never imagined on Earth. Since ancient times, legends about brilliant Venus, ringed Saturn, and Martian-laden Mars have painted the human imagination. Okay. Heavenly bodies provided going home now. for the naming of many elements as well. Uranus was discovered in 1781 and so excited the scientific community that despite the fact that it contains basically zero grams of the element, a scientist named Uranium after the new planet in 1789. Neptunium and Plutonium sprang from this tradition as well. But of all the planets, Jupiter has had the most spectacular run in recent decades. In 1994, the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet collided with it, the first intergalactic collisions humans ever witnessed, and it didn't disappoint. 21 comet fragments struck home, and fireballs jumped 2,000 miles high. This drama aroused the public, too, and NASA scientists were soon fending off some startling questions during open Q&A sessions online. One man asked if the core of Jupiter might be a diamond larger than the entire Earth. Someone else asked what on Earth Jupiter's giant red spot had to do with the hyperdimensional physics you've been hearing about. The kind of physics that would make time travel possible. A few years after Shoemaker Levy, when Jupiter's gravity bent the spectacular hail bob comet toward Earth, 39 Nike-clad cultists in San Diego committed suicide because they believed that Jupiter had divinely deflected it, and that it concealed a UFO that would beam them to a higher spiritual plane. Now there's no accounting for strange beliefs. Despite his credentials, Fred Hoyle of the B2FH cohort didn't believe in either evolution or the Big Bang, a phrase he coined derisively on a BBC radio show to poo-poo the very idea. But the diamond question mentioned previously at least had foundation in fact. A few scientists once seriously argued or secretly hoped that Jupiter's immense mass could produce such a huge gem. Some still hold out hope that liquid diamonds Cadillac-sized solid ones are possible. And if you're looking for truly exotic materials, astronomers believe that Jupiter's erratic magnetic field can be explained only by oceans of black, liquid, metallic hydrogen. Scientists have seen metallic hydrogen on Earth only for nanoseconds, under the most exhaustively extreme conditions they can produce. It is in many are convinced that Jupiter has dammed up a reservoir of it. 27,000 miles thick. The reason elements live such strange lives inside Jupiter, and to a lesser extent inside Saturn, the next largest planet, is that Jupiter is a tweener, not a large planet so much as a failed star. 
and Jupiter sucked up about 10 times more detritus during its formation, it might have graduated to a brown dwarf, a star with just enough brute mass to fuse some atoms together and give off a low watt brownish light. Authors note, Jupiter could ignite fusion with deuterium, a heavy hydrogen with one proton and one neutron. It had 13 times its current mass. Given the rarity of deuterium, one out of every 6,500 hydrogen molecules, it would be a pretty weak star, but it would still count. To ignite regular hydrogen fusion, Jupiter would need 75 times its current mass. Our solar system would have contained two stars, a binary